wealth, fame, power. Gold Roger, the king of the pirates, attained this and everything else the world had to offer. And his dying words drove countless souls to the seas. You want my treasure? You can have it. I left everything I gathered together in one place. Now you just have to find it. Yo! I love One Piece. I watch One Piece for the first time. To be exact, I've watched the first 500 episodes of the pre-time skip era of the One Piece anime, starting from East Blue all the way to the post-Summit War ASL arc. At first, I had little to no desire to read or watch One Piece. Like many other people, the anime episode count at this time of this recording has reached over 1100 episodes. And the thought of binge watching that many episodes to get caught up was a major turnoff. However, after being persuaded by my friends and co-workers, and with the live action One Piece adaptation airing on Netflix, I decided to dive into the thrilling world of One Piece. Let's go. Let's go. All right, where to begin? Well, first off, if you are planning to watch and experience the show yourself and don't want to be spoiled, click off right now because I'm going to be talking about a lot of plot related stuff. I'm going to be jumping all over the place in this video. Or if you don't care about being spoiled, just keep watching. To be honest, there are so many things I want to talk about. From the story, to the characters, to the action, to the heartfelt moments to the global and cultural impact that this show has on not just me, but the anime community. Of course, let's not forget the amazing soundtrack composed by- I apologize if I butcher these names- Koei Tananaka and Shiro Hamaguchi. Oh, and let's not forget the iconic first opening from the anime, We Are, sung by Hiroshi Kiradani. In fact, I love most of the openings from the show, like Bon Voyage, Kokoro no Chizu, Brand New World, and Jungle P. I dare to say that the One Piece soundtrack rivals Dragon Balls. It's just that good. I know I found myself on more than one occasion humming or singing the openings, even though I don't speak Japanese. But anyway, getting off sidetrack, let's talk about the story. So, I'll just give a quick synopsis. There is so much lore in this anime that I would need to make separate videos just to go over all the different locations, characters, powers, history, etc. Hey, maybe if this video does well and if you guys are interested, maybe I'll go in depth on whatever topic you'd like me to cover in another video. Eh? Eh? Anyway, back to the plot. We start our journey with a young boy named Luffy, whose body is made of rubber and wears a hat made of straw given to him by his pirate mentor slash friend, red-haired Shanks. Luffy sets out to sea looking for a crew and a mysterious treasure known as the One Piece. Once he finds this treasure, Luffy will become king of the pirates. Along his journey, Luffy meets a green-haired, skilled swordsman named Zoro, the beautiful thief and navigator, Nami, Usopp, the king of the snipers. So get king! a talented cook slash martial artist, Sanji, who just falls for every woman he sees. The cute fuzzball doctor, Tony Tony Chopper, and the infamous assassin slash archeologist, Robin. And that's only half of the crew. Then there's the skeleton musician, Brooke, who loves puns. And the genius and chaotic shipwright cyborg, Frankie. Super. Oh, and uh, there's Vivi. Well, she's not a permanent member of the crew. She technically spends time with the Straw Hats and is an honorary member. To be honest, she is one of my least favorite characters in the show. I know, I know, I'll probably get some heat for saying that, but that being said, she still plays a vital role in the Alabasta arc, and if she never ran into the Straw Hats, Crocodile, a pirate warlord, would have complete control of Alabasta and the casualties would have been greater than they were. Vivi should stay as a princess. Her real strength is connecting and inspiring her people. When it comes to close combat, she is the worst fighter. 
And don't get me started on every time someone tries to protect her and tells her to run, she just sits there watching her friends die while ignoring their last request. Run, bitch! Run! Again, I know Vivi is more of a lover, not a fighter type. And yeah, when in that situation, watching your allies slash companions die in front of you, you are going to be frozen with fear or shock. But to do it repeatedly annoys me. Now, I don't want you guys to think I'm just bashing poor Vivi. Reiterating, she does play a significant role in the story, and not every character in One Piece is going to be a strong fighter like Zoro or Sanji. Hell, some of my favorite members in the Straw Hat crew have their high and low points, like Nami, Usopp, and Frankie. At first, I found these characters to be annoying, rude, antagonistic, and I just did not like them. But after seeing their backstories unfold and Luffy helping them with their problems, they start to grow on you. You get character development and become badasses in their own way. Oh, by the way, we can't forget the most badass MVP of the crew. And that is the ship itself, the Going Mary. The Going Mary is not just a ship that the crew travels on. She is just as important as Sanji or Nami where she aids the Straw Hats on their dangerous voyages and is actually the savior in a couple of arcs, especially in Ennis Lobby. Many manly tears were shed during that arc. I'm still not over it. Best way I can compare how vital the Going Merry is. A good comparison is think of the Millennium Falcon from Star Wars. The spaceship in those movies is not just a plot device to help the protagonist travel to their destination. It's a supporting character that we grow attached to and love. We see her go through battles, flee from enemies, break down, abandon, and age through the years just like our characters. The same goes for the Going Merry. When the Straw Hats attempt to escape any lobby after rescuing Nico Robin from the world government, it's the Going Merry that swoops in in the last moment. Unfortunately, Mary can't keep going. She's fallen apart from all the damage she has taken in the past skirmishes and is laid to rest in the big blue sea, surrounded by her fellow passengers slash companions as they look on and say goodbye one last time. But hey, it's all right because Frankie built the crew a bigger and better boat. However, many obstacles still await the Straw Hat crew, like pirate warlords, the world government, marines, and godlike beings, and terrifying creatures beyond the sea. That's probably the easiest way I can explain the plot without going into details. Now I know what you're thinking. This is just a shonen anime. How deep can it be? Brother, this show has the most relatable, mature themes I've seen in a while. One Piece at times can get very serious and very dark. Not to the extent like Jujutsu Kaisen or an Attack on Titan. I mean, this is a show for everyone, not just adults or kids. It has plots revolving around human trafficking, slavery, racism, sexism, social class, and child endangerment. Yeah, I'm looking at you, Gorp. This man wants to train his grandkids to be Navy soldiers and follow the rules, but you leave them to grow up around bandits and a hostile environment? Then you only come back a few months just to beat on them? What kind of lesson is that? I mean, sure, Luffy and his brothers got stronger, but what kind of example are you setting here? What lesson are you actually teaching them? If anything, this is counterproductive. Anyway, rant over. I love and hate Garp at the same time. One of the many things I love about this world is that it feels lived in and that it feels like everyone else aside from the main cast are having their own adventures. Every so often we get a glimpse of what other pirates or allies are up to. One minute we'll be with the Straw Hat crew on their adventure, the next we are checking on what Buggy the Clown is up to or catch up with Luffy's brother Ace. Everyone is having their own adventure, and it doesn't make the world these characters live in feel small. In fact, throughout the show, the world just keeps getting bigger, bigger, and bigger. With each new arc, we the audience are discovering new things alongside the Straw Hats. Underwater prisons, islands filled with man-eating plants, a floating island in the sky, and a country ruled by strong, fearless, and beautiful women that would just cut you down without a single thought. I love the kind of woman that can kick my ass. And that's only half of it. Although like with every show, there are some gripes or nitpicks that I do have. For starters, I think the pacing could be just a bit better. 
Now I'm not saying One Piece has the most filler, but it does have quite an amount. Of course you can easily skip the filler. However, One Piece suffers the problem of pausing arcs midway through with useless recaps slash flashbacks or mini specials that have nothing to do with the plot. One instance was Ennis Lobby. I know, I keep bringing that arc back up. It's one of my favorite arcs out of the whole show. When Luffy and the crew jump off a rooftop after confronting Robin and declaring war with the world government, we are then given recaps from each crew member about how Luffy helped them in previous arcs. There were at least four episodes of nothing but flashbacks and the story was just stuck at them falling. Luckily, with my trusty filler guide and with the amazing technological ability of fast forwarding, I could just skip all that. But man, imagine watching this arc for the first time when it aired week by week, just watching the show on a weekly basis on television, or as like how they stream right now in the current arc. You have to wait weeks until the plot finally kicked in. And that sounds annoying and we could lose people's attention, maybe making them drop the show entirely. Besides that, that's my only major issue with the show. Like I said before, you can easily skip the filler if you just want to focus on manga canon content. The filler arcs aren't super long and usually range from like 1 to 10 episodes at best. Overall, I really enjoyed the first part of this series. Watching this show really makes you feel like you're going on this journey with the Straw Hats and it feels magical. It's a thrilling tale that almost reminds me of how Disney used to make their stories when I was growing up. Now, is One Piece perfect? Well, no, like I said before, I think the pacing could be a bit better and I feel like some characters, mostly side support characters, should have been killed off or stayed dead to raise tension. It's why I don't mind some of the changes in the live action adaptation. It gives characters motivation and helps drive the plot forward. Instead of showing a side slash supporting character being blown up or ripped to shreds and just show up five episodes later and be like, Hey guys, I really didn't die. I'm okay and I came to help save the day. I'm looking at you, Alabasta. <laughs> These guys should have stayed dead. However, future arcs quickly fix that problem. I'm still trying to recover from the Marine Ford arc. Oh my god. Honestly, there's still so much more content I want to talk about, but I don't want to make this into a super long video. Plus, this year marks the 25th anniversary of the anime, and I wanted to have this out before the year ends. That, and I don't want to overwork my editor. Thank you, Starbless, for working on this video. Be sure to check out his channel on figure reviews and anime discussions. Lastly, I want to say thank you to the One Piece creator, Ichiro Oda, for 30 years of storytelling and creating one of the most iconic shonen mangas out there. Like any anime, One Piece has brought fans together from all over the world and new fans are born every day. Just like Dragon Ball. There is so much content coming out now for One Piece. You have the second season of the live action, starting production, a remake of the East Blue arc, new merchandise, and new adventures of our favorite Straw Hat Boy are always coming out both in manga and anime form. With all that said, and if you made it to the end of this video and are still wondering, should I get into One Piece? The answer to that is yes. I highly recommend it. And for those who have watched this show, what are your favorite moments from the pre-time skip? I'm planning to watch the post-time skip soon, and yes, I will make a video based on my thoughts as well. Probably will take a while though since it's still ongoing, but hey, till then guys, I'll see you in the new world. See you in two years!